You're listening to To Become Family, a podcast aimed at restoring confidence in marriage and family life. And we're back with a oh, wait, let me check, tech, tech, check your turn. Mic check, checking mic. Oh good, good enough. I just can't be super loud. You can be louder. I'll be less loud. <laughs> okay. Is that good? Balance. <laughs> and we're back with episode one fourteen of To Become Family. Your favorite, absolute favorite marriage and family podcast. Because you're a celibate man and you just want to learn more about marriage and you feel like this is the place to learn. <laughs> Speaking to a very specific audience. At the <laughs> Not all of Does you. Does he feel called out or called up? <laughs> Just some of you. Um, no, we're happy to be able to do this. Uh, and then for all the all the married couples who are like, hey, let's hear about other marriages that are worse than ours. We're happy. We <laughs> we're here to serve. We are here to serve. 114, though. Wild. Yeah. You know what's wild? What? How you could be so tired and look like such an absolute snack right now. Oh, boy. Oh, midnight snack oh, after podcast well. recording. That's not happening. Oh, man. You're very sweet. Oh. This is the same outfit I wore to mass yesterday. Oh, and I loved it. <laughs> you know what I loved even more than your outfit? Is okay. our daughter's outfit. Oh, first communion. First communion dress. Tell them what you did for the dress. Oh, yeah. So, um... My well, so a sweet lady at our parish uh does seamstressing, tailoring on the side. Mm. And she took my wedding dress and made it into a first communion gown, which is really neat. And what's neat is like my wedding dress was handmade by a by a girl I went to high school with to begin with. So it's kind of special in that way. All wedding dresses are special, but it was it's neat that it went from one handmade dress to another handmade dress. And uh yeah, she just looks so gorgeous. sweet and beautiful and made me excited because I really liked my wedding dress and the pattern of it. And I don't know. Anyways, it was cool. I had originally intended to try to make it into a baptismal outfit and then mm-hmm. you get pregnant and you like are so tired and can't think of things. So I'm glad we didn't do that. No, yeah. So and we have a little extra, so maybe confirmation tie or something like that. But she got to wear her first communion gown. You can make it into pillows. Okay. No, uh, yeah. I love, one thing I love about her is that she she looked beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Her veil looked beautiful. She was so excited about receiving First Communion. Um, but I love that she can look so girly and feminine, right? Yeah. But at the same time, be such a beast in other things that she does, <laughs> yes, right? Like she's, yes. she's great at, at, she's great at jiu-jitsu. She's very, like, very rough and tumble. Yep. Um, she's known as the strongest girl up through sixth grade at school <laughs> and she's only in first grade she's super the she's, boys all um arm wrestle her like like sixth grade boys line up to arm wrestle our first grade daughter she's and tough, are impressed by her tough cookie show <laughs> but she's and she's super strong and and just the you know because she she's in house with four other boys like she plays a lot of boy games but it's really cool to see her Femininity still come yeah. out and like, yeah. cause like even just like little things that she does, like she's still like she, for mother's day, um, the kids m- made all the meals for mm-hmm. Monica. Um, and she made the macaroni and cheese for dinner. And she was just very happy to be able to do that. Like she's she just was just happy to be able to serve. Like in a different way than yeah. the boys, her, the way that she was excited about making it. She loved serving the whole family like it wasn't about mommy and like her favorite food she and, laid out all the she laid the whole yeah everything out set like, the table and she just yeah she just t- asking everybody did you like it how did it taste was yeah. that enough like she just loved the the servitude of it and mm-hmm. the serving is sweet she gave who did she give such a big hug today colby she jumped and gave somebody a hug after they got their. So, uh, so today they got their belt promotion test. It's been a they, busy. It's they, been a lot of big stuff. Yeah. So we had a belt promotion at Jiu-Jitsu tonight yeah. too. And she jumped into the line, out of line, and gave somebody a big hug. I think it was Colby. Like yeah. she, she just hugged one of the boys because she was so happy and proud of them. And yeah. Yeah. She knows how hard they've been working. Mm-hmm. It's just really cool to see that that she's able to balance all that. And like mm-hmm. she, she got her first and second communion this weekend. Yes. 
and loved it. She did. So sweet. Yeah. She loved her veil. We got our veil from Ave Maria Veil Company. Check them out on Instagram. She did, she this this young woman we met at Seek um, hand makes hand sews hand. I don't know how you make veils, but anyways, she three D prints. No, <laughs> all a sham. She makes them by hand, and she she did a beautiful job. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Hopefully, like a good hand me down. I don't know heirloom hand me down. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, chapel I, veil. Oh, so pretty. Just see if she wants to wear it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, it's like a chapel what? veil. Yeah, so it's not like a first communion wedding veil kind mm-hmm. of thing. I'm not. I'm really not big into pushing anything faith related to on the kids. Any any additional devotion devotionals or sacramentals outside of just mass. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's neat they've all picked up on different mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. that they love, which is it's such an special. parenting is such an interesting experiment <laughs> right because like you yes. um like you and i resolved to, to parent a certain way like we want certain outcomes but like we're not sure how we're going to go about it no constantly um, checking in how's it going yeah well, <laughs> is I'm, this I'm, achieving what we were hoping for because like similarly so like colby recently um our oldest uh got invested into the brown scapular mm-hmm. and he's I just asked him because so like there's certain promises you make when you wear a scapular. One of them is to live out. We talked about this in other episodes, like live out chastity according to your state of life and explain what chastity is, explain all the, you know, other things you have to live out. And one of them is like, they have to do a particular prayer to Mary. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, and they're I, allowed to have permission from the priest that does the investiture mm-hmm. to like a, appropriate to their stage of life, their yep. season of life, like what that Marian devotion yeah. can be. So his is a decade of the rosary. Um, and we have not, so like we, one thing I told him when he, when he did, before he did it, I was like, if you're going to make a promise, like the scapular is not going to save you from, you're not going to like go to hell, heaven just because you're wearing a scapular. Mm-hmm. Like it's cloth. It's blessed. It's great. It's a sacramental, but like, it's not, that's not going to save you. What will is your, the promises you're making and, yep. and like fulfilling those promises. Right. And we have not been like, I've not been keeping up to make sure he's doing it. Like, nope. that's not my job. I didn't make the promise you did. Right. Um, but then, so before bed, I'm like, so have you been doing the rosary? He's like, yeah, I do it every morning. He's like, I do it. I wake up and I do it before I get out of bed. Cause like the day's busy. I might, for, I may not be able to pray, but like, I know I can. And I was like, oh, what oh, a disciplined young man. Wow. Cause we never suggested <laughs> that. No, I didn't. I, we didn't give him anything. <laughs> no, and I, we I gave like, him nothing. I like no. that freedom of like, yeah. you, like, cause we, we didn't, what we gave him is a standard. Like if you're making a commitment, you got to stick to it. Yeah. Um, but then him figuring out how to do it, it's just interesting. Again, it's an experiment because like, I know that wouldn't work for a second. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will. I don't know. I don't know. He can't remember to brush his teeth. Well, <laughs> <laughs> true. He's more like his father. Um, but it's just That's inter- neat, though. That, yeah, that yeah. He's, he figured that out on his own. Um, and we had said that, too. You know, he, he spoke to the priest and he gave him his devotion and and – my one suggestion was, okay, well, we'll order this. Do you feel like this is reasonable? Yes. Okay, we'll order the scapular. But I think from now until you're invested into the confraternity that you should practice mm. and see if you're able to do it and what things, you know, are hard to do and what things do you need to, you know, adjust to see, make mm-hmm. sure that happens. So he apparently figured out that mornings are the <laughs> yeah. are the prime time for prayer, which is I- good. And like one of the things that I, I thought it'd be worth talking about today was how, so we're going to be focused more on parenting. I don't know if the title reflects that, um, but the balance that we've been able to strike. So again, like we're 10 years, over 10 years into parenting. I don't think we have everything down. We definitely still like make a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I think we have been able to do well is build a culture where the kids understand how loved they are. They understand their expectations and mostly like they understand that you and I see things the same, mm. right? Like we have mm-hmm. the same. You're on the same page. And um, it's it's hilarious when they come to one of us and they ask for a thing and we respond. They're like, that's what mommy said. Or like, that's what like, daddy said. Like and like they're frustrated <laughs> because like they, they, the kids try to play you. I don't, I, I know if no matter how angelic they might look, like they try to play you in, in, this is what we used to say in the group homes. Like we'd say like, the kids are going to play you. And by that, we mean like they play you against each other. So like mm-hmm. they might ask one person for a thing. And if they don't like the answer, they'll go to the other person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we've both done a good job of being like one of my responses first is not go ask mommy mm-hmm. is what did mommy say? Mm-hmm. And then usually if they say mommy said no, I'm like, all right, then no, the answer is no. And if they said mommy didn't say anything, 
one, I think they're lying. <laughs> and, but then I say what I say, and then they'll be like, that's what mommy said. And I'm like, uh, well, I thought mommy didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, but I like that we've been able to do that. Um, I don't know how we got to that point, though. Like, I think that's something that I think we can take for granted that we see eye to eye, because I know that not everyone does. Mm-hmm. Um, and they might, like, there's times where I'm like, I wish you would let up on them for something. And I know, like, likewise, like, you're like, yeah, you're being a little harsh. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the moment, I think we support each we other. We support each other, and then and we talk like, about it yeah. at another time. But, like, how did we get to that point? Because I feel like that's something that, like, took a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And, like, that's the point um, of this podcast. I talk about the trial and error so that they don't have to do as much error. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this connected to our parenting, but I know at the beginning of our marriage, there were so many times where I would commit to something or answer somebody before talking to you about it. And you're like, why didn't you just say, I have to talk to Renzo first? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think of it. Or like, I thought I knew what you would say. Or Mm -hmm. I don't know. I had a lot of excuses of why I didn't. And it, it became such a point of contention that we that I really, really was, I don't know. I just tried like for everything mm-hmm. to make sure I checked in with you first. And more often than not, it, we were in agreement. And mm-hmm. if we weren't, it wasn't like, oh, I just deferred to your answer. But it was like, oh, I didn't think of something a certain way. Or you didn't think of something a certain way. And you're like, then you would come to my conclusion mm-hmm. or I'd come to your conclusion. Like by us processing through it, it helped us actually to come to an agreement. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily that we were like, oh, we just have to pick which one we're going to say out loud. But Mm -hmm. so I don't know if that helped with the parenting part because I I don't remember how, yeah, like I don't remember how that translated to parenthood, but I remember that Mm -hmm. being a really big issue in the first few years of our marriage. So I don't know, maybe that's just like that seeped into now that our, our kids try to, catch us one-on-one mm-hmm. with something well I, re- I remember at least for like for me growing up that i had two different um i knew that my parents saw things differently and like wanted to i don't know i don't know if like be on my good side or like win me over was the right phrase but like there was definitely like one who was stricter and the other one who was like more loosey-goosey and i knew who I can play when to get what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that for our kids. Like I wanted them to to know like this is the way things are. And so like so like I, I always had I had a desire of like let's make sure we're on the same page with things. Mm-hmm. Um I don't but like I, we must have had conversations though. Cause like that's one thing to be like, don't make plans. I don't mm-hmm. want to leave the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like it's very different to be like when I mean, we must have had like a thing. Like I told Colby this please don't contradict. Like we must have, no? There's been times I think that, I mean, even now. It must have started when he was like three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's even times where like, I said this, I wish you hadn't said something different. I'm like, oh shoot, you're right. I didn't check to see if you had addressed this certain situation mm, yet. Okay. Because I think, I think important... it happens more casually now, but. Yeah, because I think that's an important part because I think a lot of times um, we can assume, well, I think, not we assume, sorry. I think people can think that um, eventually we just will get into a flow without having the uh, being intentional about it. Not just being intentional, but like having the confrontation about it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And being like, I said this, why'd you say that? Yep. Can we get on the same page about it? And like, yep. it could be done. It can be done charitably. Yeah. Um, but I just, I just, I like that we don't parent in two different directions. Cause I know that that's a possibility. Well, and right? I think that there's a trap too, of like feeling like we fit into just certain roles in parenting. Mm-hmm. Like, one is the disciplinarian and one is the comforter or one is the good cop, bad cop or like whatever. And that like, oh no, that's in mommy's domain. So I'm just not even going to touch it. And like, oh, that's daddy's deal. Like daddy does sports things. So like go talk to daddy if you have a question about your sports stuff. And well, even like me, like, oh, daddy's not home all day. So therefore when he comes home, he just wants to be fun. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't want to have to. Right, 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 right. So and I think I, it's a bunch of nonsense. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, adjusting my seat. Um, so I think that that was, I think that that can be a trap that couples easily fall into because mm. yeah, it's just easier if I can compartmentalize the things that I'm responsible for with the kids. But then so often like those things can 
eventually become contradictory, even though they like live in two different mm -hmm. worlds. Like, oh, mommy's in charge of all the school stuff and daddy's in charge of the sports stuff. But like, if we're not on the same page as far as like discipline and integrity and mm -hmm. hard work and how you respond to failure, then our kids are not going to understand how to do either of those, like how to understand how to do any of those things in either of those situations. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know. I think that there's so many elements of life that your like your virtue and your character overlap. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when we live a disintegrated way of parenting, then that will affect how our children integrate or disintegrate mm -hmm. into their activities. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be different when they get into like teenage years. Right. And, and not, I guess not in the way that we do it, but like how, how, necessary because i feel like it's super necessary now that they don't get different answers all the time mm -hmm. right or even like i know our kids like love routine and it's, routine is good for kids but like it, they're at least getting the same types of responses from mommy and daddy mm -hmm. rather than like sometimes because that's something i grew up with too um i know you're listening you know who you are like some some days i would grow up and i would grow up <laughs> some days i would I'd never grow up <laughs> some days the the parent in question would be like in a great mood so yeah. everything would be great. In other days, parent would be terrible mood, terrible mood, and like yeah. the same types of things would be I would be requesting or doing, and it'd be like yeah. get a negative response and be very yeah. confusing. Whereas I I like that. I think for the most part they're able to get the same. What is this? I'm making gestures, but like I'm not like we're not like up and down. We're mm -hmm. like consistent, consistent. Is yeah. this consistent? Yeah, like even keel. Is that a thing? Flat. <laughs> That's what you're demonstrating. But, yes. <laughs> but like they're not getting flat like, lines. It's not like they don't do their work and they're getting like sometimes it's fine and they don't do their work. Other times it's like it's a big deal. Yeah. Right? Like they're just like, no, every time you don't do your work, it's the same kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Right? Or like like after the, the soccer game, I was very clear with, with our young man. Yeah. I was like, How like do you want me to be honest? Do you want me to tell you what you want like to yeah. make you feel good? And he's like, No, I want you to be honest. Like, okay, so yeah. I was honest. And I feel like that's how I talked to him about other things yes. too. And that's how you talked about other things. Like yes. you, it could be changing your room, it could be it could be anything, yes. but we always communicate the same way to them. Well and I think okay, so two things I think I'm pulling I'm hearing from what you're saying also with my active background knowledge of listen listening. of living here. But um That's key. So I think that we have probably ad nauseum come up with these like same baseline priorities and baseline like things in our home. I don't know if priorities is the right word, but so one thing that we say to our kids all the time where we ask them is why do we love you? And the answer is because you're my son, because I'm your son or because I'm your daughter. And, and the lesson we try to teach them out of that is that like, there's nothing that you can do to change that fact. Mm -hmm. So in presenting this question to Colby after his soccer game of like, you cannot change that. And we just want to understand what your goals are here in soccer is your goal. And that was like how you started. You're like, is your goal to just like have fun with your buddies and like soccer and play Cause then I'll tell you, you did great. Cause you did like you, you had fun and you didn't stink, stink. Like you weren't horrible, but, or do you want like, or do you want to be a good soccer player? It's so hard watching a game like that. Yeah. Right. Next to a former player of mine. Yes. Cause like I would never have allowed yes. any of the non, like I was <laughs> such a stickler when I, when I coached like one and I coached basketball. I didn't coach soccer. Yeah, but in basketball, like if there was any defensive error or like a, a, a like a, a lapse of judgment in in, in mm -hmm. how they shifted and like the play they made, like I would lose it on them, and not like lose it in a bad way. Like it was it was definitely like a the same the same parenting, like the same that we parent the kids, but it was like definitely escalated in like the intensity of it. Yeah. Um, and like I would always follow up and make sure that because I wanted them to understand. It's like yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't like a parent or, or a coach that like degrades the player and makes them feel bad. It was definitely like you can't make this error again. Like the reason you're doing this is because of this. It can't happen again. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't coach. We don't talk to Colby about soccer or other any of the kids about sports to that extent at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. We just let them like go have fun, do what you want. Yep. You're doing great. Yep. Whatever, ball hit you in the face, you're doing great. <laughs> but like, but at some point, like we are still oh, very aware of athletics. 
Yeah. And what need, like if you're at this, like I remember like he is at the age of where my now friend who's in the, who's an army ranger yep. was when I first started, started coaching, coaching him, him. in, in yep. basketball. Mm-hmm. And I know how hard I was on him then. Yep. And I'm like, oh, you get, like his coach is super easy on him compared to how <laughs> I was. Like I know it sounds like his coach yells like, oh, you have, no, compared to how I was on the other guys. Yep. So like, but I know how hard I had to push him to get to like where he, you know, he got, sure. to, he got to where he was in basketball. He did great. Um, and I'm like, if you want that, yep. like, do you want me to tell you, like, do you want us to tell you like where you're at yep. in terms of that trajectory or like, yeah. are you just okay? Yeah. And I, I'm happy he was, he seemed, he was very receptive. Yeah. Like, he was like, oh yeah, I'm not yep. bothered by anything you told me, Yep. which is cool. And then he's been working on it mm-hmm. and yeah, he, not that it was long ago, but he's, yeah, he's already implementing and trying to practice more and do do things differently, like practice more intensely. But I loved what I loved about the exchange was that you, you didn't know what I was going to say, mm-hmm. but like you and you supported me. And I don't know if I was too much, but like I, I appreciated being able to address him and not like have you come afterwards and like coddle him. Like mm-hmm. you like, and and you, I, I'm assuming I don't know if you did, but like you reiterated what I said, but like in from a mom's perspective, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. But like, but yeah. like that's that's. Yeah. I think that's super yeah. healthy that he hears it from both. Yeah. Different, like different ways of talking and whatever, but like you didn't come and coddle after. Yeah. It was funny. So yeah, we, we drove in separate cars. So you talked to him before we like headed home and then I had him in the car and I was like, buddy, did you understand what daddy was asking you? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me what daddy was asking you. So I could like hear that he understood. And he's like, well, I want to be a good, I want to be good at soccer. I want to be better at soccer. I want to be one of, I want to be the best soccer player I can be. So that means I have to do things. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, and like, what kind of things do you think you have to do? And and we just kind of went back and forth and we're like, okay, so then mommy and daddy are going to remind you of those things. And we're going to let you know when you're not doing those things so that you know you're not doing the things you said you wanted. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and if you if you change your mind and you just want to have fun with playing soccer and not work as hard as you can to get better, then you just let us know and we'll keep coming to soccer and we love you very much and like we love watching you play soccer and we love that you found a thing that you love. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I followed up on that. But but you're asking mommy and daddy to to remind you. So sometimes that's you, sometimes you're not gonna like to hear that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I did follow up on the way home. Yeah. I don't know. I think. But like that, like that, how did we get to that? Because I think that's a really cool thing. I, I would like, I would want to encourage couples to get to that point. Well, and I, I, sorry. So the point I was trying to make beforehand, like with the Before foundation of, of like, we love you no matter what. And the, so I think that you and I have, we talk a lot <laughs> to each other. I, well, one, I think that we prioritize time together to like check in. Like there is no two ships passing in the night kind of situation here. Like if we're busy, like I don't care. We are like making sure that we're checking in and how are things going and what's happening with the kids and how are we feeling about stuff? I don't know. I think that we really prioritize communicating often. Jo- uh, Jordan Peterson I mean, I've, I've seen this and I've heard him say this like in several different places, but that couples need at least 90 minutes a week to just check in with each other, Mm. communicate with one another. I forget what he called, like, but kind of like go through the schedule and update one another and like, let each other know, like, just like business, like, Mm. like family business. He's like, you need at least 90 minutes a week of that before you can even start to think about intimacy. Mm. And it was like, and he's like, but that builds and that allows for intimacy because you feel like you know what's happening with one another. And so I think not that we knew that from the get go or like have been like, oh, Jordan Peterson said this, so we must do it. But I think that we've really harped on, I don't know, like I know I had a stepdad who worked all the time and a mom who was responsible for 95% of the stuff that happened at home and like the schedule keeping and what we were up to. And he didn't make it to all of like the activities because he was working late and traveling and stuff like that. So I don't think he knew to the extent of like what was going on in our family. And so by default, my mom made a lot of the decisions and my mom did a lot of the follow through and stuff like that. 
Um, and I just didn't want that in our home. Mm. I don't know if I ever like articulated that, but like, I just knew that that's not mm-hmm. how I wanted it. I didn't want it all on me either. Like it's not, I'm kind of a control freak and I probably could do it. Like I could manage it all on my own, but I, mm-hmm. something in that feels disordered to me. So I don't know, maybe I just over communicate with you, <laughs> but in that, I think that we have come to an agreement on certain baselines or priorities that we have for our kids. And so all of our communication with them and decision making with them mm-hmm. is like stems from that. So in addition to you are loved because you're my child, not because of anything that you do, but also that we prioritize kindness and safety and like and discipline like you mm-hmm. do hard things it's okay for things to be hard it's okay to be scary but we still do them mm-hmm. and like that is just like a common thing that like all of our kids could say that yeah. like we do hard things cuz we yeah. say that all the time so i think that we like return a lot to those baselines and then sure communicate from there there's also a level of trust though that I feel like we've been able to cultivate again. I don't know. I want to know how we got here because I, I don't, I feel like we can't be prescriptive. Um, but I, there's a level of trust where that, why is the cat meowing? You already ate. How did they get out? I don't know. Magic. Oh, it's Polly. I'm not editing, ed- editing any of this. But like the level of trust that we've been able to get to um, allows for things like, for example, um, for us to support what the other is doing, even if we don't fully know what they're, where they're going. Um, So like the soccer thing is a good example, but another one, like I know that there's been times where um, a kid, a a kid has come up to me and and, had like said to me, like, I didn't like how mommy did blank. So like it, it could be because you, you scolded them about something or, I, you know, I can't think of other reasons, but usually it's because that. And like, I don't like that mommy did this. And I try really hard to always take your side. Mm-hmm. I don't think I usually, I, I think I always take your side and be like, okay, well, you probably did something you weren't supposed to because mommy doesn't just scold just to scold. So like, what did you do? And we talk about it forever and like, okay, do you feel bad that it happened? Yes. Okay. Do you want an apology from mommy? Yes. Do you understand why she did it though? So you're not like, you still did a thing that you need to fix. Yes, I understand that. And then they go to you and then like, and then I encourage them to go get an apology. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're, you're really great about always apologizing. Um, and like, that's like the rupture and repair from Do- Dr. Berninger that he was talking about. But I think just like, I, I have a, tr- like, usually I don't know what they're talking about. Like mm-hmm. there's not like, I don't, but like I have a level of trust that like you handle the situation the best way you could in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I usually try to, so I, support what you're what you did so that they don't feel like i don't know i don't want them to feel like that we're just on separate pages i remember feeling so like as a kid feeling uh, unsettled by that yeah like as much as like i knew my parents loved me like that when when they don't see eye to eye like there's an unsettling like mm-hmm. like you don't know and, and this is an exaggeration but like this is the best i can describe it but, like you don't know like which way is up because mm-hmm. like you're like as a kid you're just kind of like well which one which, of you do I listen to right, and like listen follow to, like, who's the smarter one who's is, the is better it, one like because yeah. eventually then there's a there's a flip where you're like you're old enough you're like I'm gonna listen to the one that gives me what I want right but like as a younger kid I remember also feeling that too of like I don't know who's who who's yeah. right and who's wrong and, yeah and that's so like I don't want them to ever feel that like they you know but then the, but they also have like there's they feel a safety of like coming to me and saying like i yeah. didn't like this because i know they've done the same thing for me like mm-hmm. when i've done something i'm not like that not that i'm not supposed to but like handle the thing at not as uh professionally as i wish i did <laughs> um they've like they'll say it to you and and then and i know similar things happen where like they yeah. come to me and the idea i didn't like when yeah. you said this yeah like even <laughs> some silly things jump off like i didn't like that you took the toy when i was praying like well you shouldn't have had it but yeah. like yeah so whatever yeah but for him, it's usually more of like, I didn't like your tone or the yep. way you looked at hurts, me or hurts, like. It hurts some deep. Yep. Uh, but like, so like the, even that of like just trusting you as a, as a parent, I don't. Yeah. Give prescriptions, please. <laughs> Doctor. Doctor. Um, no, I. Hmm. I really think that. It must have had like knockdown dragouts about this at some point. I don't feel like we ever get anywhere without fighting. 
I definitely think that we have disagreed on approaches to parenting before. Like there's definitely been times where like I've disagreed with what you did or like How did I show you you were wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh boy. Um <laughs> The, the the meme of like I I was just trying to explain I wasn't being defensive, yes. but now I want to just argue because <laughs> I feel like I was being like you told me I was being defensive. I feel the like cycle. you had that look on your face yes. when I said how did I convince you? Yes. So I there's definitely been times where we've disagreed about a parenting thing. We've tried really hard to not show that in front of our kids and to like support the other person, um, but I think that we, mostly you, refuse to let something lie. (laughs) Like like you refuse to let there be a conflict and it just remain a conflict. And and like, so we have spent long evenings like getting to the root of like, okay, well, where are you coming from? Yeah, it's like one in the morning, right? We would would stay up super late. This is before working out. So (laughs) I couldn't do that now. Now we need to speed it up because jujitsu starts (laughs) at 6 a.m. But, um, and just like really getting to the root of like, why do you feel so passionately about this? And why do I feel passionately against it? And like, Mm. what, and understanding where the person is coming from. And then there's just times where we have, have one called each other out or up. I like the phrase called up, but I called the other up and been like, I think that you're coming at this because of how things were in your home. Mm. And that's not our home. So like, we don't need to overcorrect or overcompensate. Or there's been times where like, you're being too lenient on something because like when you don't address it, it can turn into this. And Mm. like the other person kind of sees the trajectory or the path and you're like, Oh, I hadn't thought about like long term. I was just thinking in this moment. Um, I do think, so like, I think that we just refuse to disagree and like, let that be like, we don't agree to disagree very often. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, we're like, no, what does that mean? Why do we disagree? Lose, lose, (laughs) lose, lose, lose. There we go. Like, why do we disagree? How can we come to an agreement? I think that there are times. So I think that's one thing. I think there are other times where you have deferred to me because, I've just learned more about like child development stuff. So Mm -hmm. you're like, I had these expectations, but you're telling me that that's like unrealistic for a child this age or what? Well, I also know that you're with them more than I am. So like you can tell me about their behaviors. Yeah. Like what are they doing? Yeah. Like there's times when I come home and like they're acting a certain way and I want to immediately correct. And you're like, no, this has been the day. Like they're just, this is just the way they are today. Or like like, they're going through like a mental milestone right now. So like Mm -hmm. they're really, Firing on all cylinders here, but because of that, they're like super well, like, tired. Because <laughs> so we, like, we have one of our kids who likes to wander off away from people, mm-hmm. like just wants his alone time. And I remember coming home and wanting to like, I, I correct that often and wanting to correct it. And you were like, no, 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 he was great today. Yeah. He needs his space. Let him have like, his okay. introvert time. Like, yeah. But like I, and see like that kind of thing happens in front of the kids and I'm totally okay with that yeah. because I, I don't know. And, and I was about to act on something without all the information and then you gave it to me and I was able to change. Like yeah. I, I like that they can see to that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it shows that like a parent knows me and that another parent is willing to like learn that mm-hmm. I think and like understand and, and to like gather the information instead of just making like blanket statements. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I think, yeah, so I think that that's been really important, but that's because we have sat and talked about him, mm-hmm. like just the two of us of like, okay, he's different. Like he's our second child. Our first one is like super extroverted, has FOMO, like he's his mother. he's like me a like lot. And then our second one, John Paul, is more like you, but like they're different combinations because like Colby has, anyways. <laughs> But because we've sat and talked so much about how they are, I can just say, no, like he stretched himself today. Yep. He needs some some alone time and you know what that means. Yep. Like I don't have to go into this full explanation because we've already done that. Like yeah. we've done that legwork. So it's exhausting and it makes it seem like 
all we do is talk about and think about our kids. And like, Mm -hmm. a lot of that is true. Like we, we do think about them and plan for them and, Mm -hmm. and want their good. So we try to figure out like, I don't know, we're reflective of our day and like, what kind of things should we adjust to parent them well? Mm -hmm. Cause it's amazing that like you can have the same recipe in five different children come out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they repeat after on the sixth. I'm not gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> the one of the things I I also like is that we we as our kids have gotten older we've learned who can do what with them well when they're in certain moods. So for example, like there's mm, some where mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, yes, I can handle them right now, and then I know at some point I'm like, nope, they're past the point. Yep, you need them. For, like, mm-hmm. and it it depends on the child. Like I know, yes, I'm trying not. To, I don't want them to call them out individually, but like for one of them, I comfort them. With humor. <laughs> oh, but I can cover, I, oh. I know, like, if they're upset, I know I can cover them, but, like, there's parts, there's times when like, there's, like, yelling, screaming, and, like, I can't. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it, because I also get triggered by it, and then I yeah. start reciprocating. Everyone's escalating. And like, this isn't helpful. Everyone's yelling. Yes. Whereas, like, then you come in, and, like, it seems like you're being more rational, but, like, you're saying the same exact thing. Same words. And yep. for some reason, it just changes. And, yep. like, that's... So like I like that we can tap in we tap in for stuff like that mm-hmm. and like we've got I I'm pretty I'm proud of us for getting to the point that like it's just like a can you mm-hmm. take so and so and it's just like okay and like we know mm-hmm. and like even for like shower time bath time mm-hmm. like I know they're yelling daddy but like can you go <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by the tone that you'll handle this better than me <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh. oh it just happened yeah freaking kids. And I think that there's like, there's humility in that too. Cause like you want to be the answer to all the things mm-hmm. or there's like engagement. Cause there's certain times where you're like, I don't feel like handling this, mm-hmm. but like I have to. But even like, <laughs> even like motivating them. I know, I know that with our oldest that we just talked about the soccer thing. I know I said what I said, but I know I didn't motivate him. Mm-hmm. Right. I think he, he is, he listens to your voice a lot better for things like that. Mm. If that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. you can, yeah. Like I've seen you have a conversation with him. Like I feel like you're able to like speak the same language sometimes. Yeah. That, like I, you can yes. instruct him very well, right? Yes. Like he learns from you very well. You can, you, every night you go over some jujitsu move and he does it the next day, like at practice. And mm-hmm. anyways, like you guys have, you guys speak sports. Like mm-hmm. you speak like the, the, like the strategy of sports very well. And he gets that, Mm -hmm. but like, yeah, I guess like I, yeah, I do think that I say the thing that gets him to like, understand, flip the switch. Like, okay. And like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, you wish it was you, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that we've really taken this parenting thing as like a partnership really seriously. Mm -hmm. Like we're, I don't know. It goes back to our coaching, but we're like, we're teammates. Like this is a team thing and we've got to be doing this. Like we've got to be working towards the same thing together. And so so finish that thought. Well, I think that it's really important to not, to not discount that or like let that slide sometimes like, Oh, this area of life isn't that important for us to be on the same page about like, mm-hmm. no. Cause then it goes into or even like, being like, Oh, because you're the wife, you're the one that's supposed to be in charge of the children. So like mm-hmm. you need to know them in and out and not like you just tap me in whenever you need me. Yep. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yeah. Or tell me what to say and I'll say it. Yeah. Well, so like, so what would you say for advice for, for, um, couples who have like one kid or two kids or one kid and one kid on the way who, whose kids are young and like mm-hmm. they're not at the point where they're talking to a 10 year old about soccer but like mm-hmm. i i think i could be wrong i could be misremembering creating memories because we do that as humans but i feel like even as the when we had a two-year-old and a and a, and a newborn like mm-hmm. we were talking about their behaviors and like oh they're doing this for and sure like colby throwing food against the wall yeah and oh, he was the was worst like, to- he was the worst like, toddler when he's done we're just gonna turn around <laughs> yeah i think because i think we talked a lot about like discipline and mm-hmm. like what behaviors yeah what what are unpleasant behaviors that we want to address mm-hmm. and like okay what's also the preceding trigger that like leads to this kind mm-hmm. of stuff how do, should we address that first you know or like mm-hmm. yeah and what kind of consequences are we comfortable with what are well, we not comfortable just, with so in terms of husband and wife like who how would you say that conversation was led in our home or like what's an ideal because i i can see how that can become 
the wife says, this is what happens. This is what needs to happen. And mm. the husband just does it. But I don't feel like that. that's what happened with us. No, I think there were a lot of things that you didn't like. And you're like, what are we going to do about this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. That's a made-up memory. That sure. definitely... That authentic laugh says otherwise. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> Imposter. Um, mm. Right, but do you see the temptation of like... Oh, for sure. For sure. And there's also that temptation for the wives to like to do that because like the the type A or like the control part in me or like, yeah, I'm the one that spends most of the time with them. Like you should you should listen to me and stuff. But Which I could like because you spend all, all day with them, like could cloud how you, you could see be things. missing stuff. You could be Absol- wrong. Absolutely. Because if an outside person or a dad who's who's working and then coming back in or however the dynamics are, but if like somebody kind of like comes in and notices this thing and you've been rationalizing why it's okay mm. because, you know, they didn't nap today or whatever, but like actually it's a pattern of behavior and they're the ones pointing it out. It can feel a little bit hurtful because you're just like, you feel responsible for all of your children's behaviors. Like you feel like I should be able to mold them into exactly how I want them Mm -hmm. to be all the time. So it can feel a little bit like when you point out a child's behavior that you're actually pointing out my parenting flaws instead Mm. of a toddler just being a toddler. So, so you have to be careful not to be like super defensive and take everything personally. Mm -hmm. But like if somebody points out a pattern and they're like, this is really like, yeah, this is this is unpleasant in the moment, and if it continues, this is not like this is going to be harder and harder to yeah. unlearn. Like this behavior is going to be harder and harder to unlearn. I think, um, gosh, what is it? Is it Jordan Peterson too about like for, by the time you're four, if you're not likable, like yeah, that was um, yeah, if your kid's not likable by four, everyone's going to lie to him for the rest of his life. His peers will lie to him pretending that they like him, and par- adults will lie to him pretending that they yeah, like by just tolerating him. And I think that that's like. That's that was a, a yeah. That's an interesting. I think that's really important because, like, you're you're you have to work on that human formation when your children are young, mm-hmm. and you feel like it's not that important because they're they're not in school yet, or they're not like they're not even talking yet, or they're not like yeah on a sports team, so they don't need to know how to be on a sports team. Well, guess what? How do they prepare to be like an active participating member on a sports team by like hey man, if your kid's biting, you got to cut that out by three. <laughs> that's right. So, or else they're going to be picked last. There's a high correlation. The I, biters are the ones that get the last. The biters. I'm so sorry. I don't know if this is All true. All I'm sitting here is looking at my gym class. I'm like, which ones were the biters? I bet I can pick which ones were the biters. Yes. <laughs> they're not going to work hard. They're just going to bite. No, they're just going to bite. And they bite in different ways when they're eight. But it's not actually biting. Anyways. I, I think that like... And listen... Okay, here's the thing. Parenting is exhausting mm-hmm. also. So there gets to a certain point where you're just like, do I really, sh- like, do I need to address this too? Oh because I've already addressed so many other things. And I'm so tired and I feel like I'm addressing 100,000 things. Like, yes, this is also important. Can you imagine if I could take the energy? Because I don't think I have the cap- ability to not address a thing. No. I don't know. But imagine if I was like that about like, like cleanliness. Oh, <laughs> Can you imagine? Imagine. <laughs> imagine. In the house. Not not like personal. I'm clean. <laughs> I meant like, I meant like, I meant like, well, do you remember Liam? Yes, I was just going <laughs> to say that story. But of Monica's cousins when, when we were younger. dating. Why? He has never seen a colored person before. Why is he? Mom, a POC, person of color. Um, why is he so Latinite. dirty? Does he know how to take a shower? Yeah, he thought I was just dirty. Like, nope. Skin's just dark, dude. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, it's like, I, yeah, I think that's, some, that's a, it's funny. I, I said to you before about, I feel like ADHD is an advantage about for some, for certain things. And for, I think for like that of like, I just can't let behaviors go. No. Like mm-hmm. I, maybe, maybe it'll come back to bite me when they're older. When, I, when the kids are older and I'm older and I'm doing things and they're just correcting everything. <laughs> um, but like, I just. Dad, you can't act like that in public. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> no, but I yeah, I think I I have that tendency of just like every little thing like nope, I don't like that. We're cutting mm-hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. Even if it's socially acceptable like if I don't like a thing. Yeah. Sorry. Well, and then there's sometimes after you say that I'm like it's 
it's okay for yeah. them to do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you're like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because so-and-so from your class or whatever, like, <laughs> call out the thing. But I, yeah, I don't know. I think my biggest piece, as always at the end of every podcast, go and talk about these things with one another. But like the biggest thing is you guys have to talk about all of these things. And I'm sorry. Don't Every let week one of the spouses t- like pretend like it's not their responsibility. No. Like it's both of yours. Listen, you're part of the problem. You're part of the reason why they are the way that they are. You you're, help you're, you helped make if them. You participated in the making, you participated in the molding. Ooh. <laughs> look at that. That's an Instagram post right there. <laughs> I think that's true though. No, you cannot, you cannot defer. This is like, we say defer in the, like, when we have these background conversations and one just seems to like know Mm -hmm. more than the other, whether that's like the Holy Spirit has enlightened them or because of experience or because of like my background in education, like we say defer in that situation, but like not in the active part of parenting, like we don't defer. We're mm-hmm. both parenting. There's a, a Instagram account, dads don't babysit. I think it's dads don't babysit. And there's like underscores anyways. But it's about like, like this idea that, that dads like, oh, who's watching, who's babysitting the kids tonight? Oh, dad, you know, and like, mm-hmm. like, no, dads are dads mm-hmm. and their fathers and their parents. And they are, they should be as equally involved in raising their children. Um, and making the decisions and deciding like how we're going to handle these situations. And, and I think, oh my gosh, actually this makes me think of the teenagers you brought up teenagers, but um, with our youth group kids that like when one parent has been like the main parent for so long, and then suddenly these like actual big deal things come up mm-hmm. in teenage years that like, can be really intense and scary and like these little kids things don't seem like a big deal but like if you've just been if you've been passive for that long yeah like you don't get to engage then you mm-hmm. don't know how to yeah. they don't trust you the the spouse doesn't believe that you can do right. it like th- you, this you is start one bean at a time we gave them hope that episode one bean at a time one bean at a time yeah <laughs> as you roll your eyes well a little bit like i i don't know like i just think that like it's important to Yeah, don't earlier. take a back seat. Like yeah. if you're a parent of young children, you have the opportunity to not have to plant, like to put beans in a jar and actually like already be there. Stop looking at the compass. No, I'm looking to see which you're, way is north. I know what you're doing. <laughs> you're playing with a little I'm kid. I'm paying attention. <laughs> you're playing with a toy and it's distracting It's me. not a toy. It's a real compass. It's a toy but compass. But it's not pointing north now. Can you make a point north? I was paying attention. They did, They were none the wiser. See, you're, you're, you're. I know. That's why I asked you to stop because I was, I wanted to participate. The corner's north. (laughs) If you are a parent of young children. Okay. So this is not if you're. Kumpai. Multiple compasses. (laughs) We are, we are falling apart now. It's, how many minutes have we been recording? This is it. 47. We've hit the limit. 47? Ish. That was the problem. We set a type 45. (laughs) I just wanted to make the compass point north. I would have listened. Get involved now so that you're not... (laughs) So you don't miss out on it later. End it with wisdom. This is great. 114. In the books. 114 in the books. If you participated in the making, you have to participate in the molding. I like that. Yes. I want to remember that line. I'll keep it recorded. Excellent. <laughs> Post it. <laughs> you won't cut that out. We will see you guys at the next episode.